In this video, I'm going to be putting up the drywall in the bathroom. I'm going to start out by putting up the panels in the skylight area. Before putting up the panels in the skylight, I put some plastic trim on the edges facing the skylight using some contact cement. And then I put some weather stripping on top of the plastic trim to seal against the skylight. Now I'm putting up the 5 8 drywall for the ceiling. One thing that's nice is that I was able to use the cutout area around the shower to hold the drywall in place before lifting it up and screwing it into place. Once I got the drywall screwed up, I used the roto zip to cut out the material from the skylight. Now I will say that I didn't do a very good job with the roto zip and it probably would have been better for me to use a saw instead. Now to attach the drywall to the studs, I'm using inch and 5 8 drywall screws. Uh, the original drywall to this house was nailed to the studs, but I would say it's more ideal to have them screwed to the studs. The screws will be less likely to pull out. One of the downsides to using screws is that you don't want to over tighten the screw. Uh, because that'll break through the top layer of the paper and that'll actually be a less secure connection. You don't want to break the paper. You want it to fold into the paper and just get low enough that you can fill that top of the screw with some drywall mud. And drywall screws are specially designed so that they're less likely to break through the paper. Now I did buy a drywall screw gun, which actually has a depth setting on it to prevent you from screwing it too tight. But I didn't really like the use of it. I found it much easier to use a drill and then just find the right friction setting on it so that it didn't over tighten the screw, but tightened it just enough to bring it below the surface of the drywall. So now what I'm doing is I'm pre-filling the gaps between the drywall and filling in the screw heads. After I get done doing all this, I'll put in the corner beads and the drywall tape. To tape the ends of the drywall together, I used FibroFuse tape. It's pretty much like a fiberglass tape and it's really strong and durable. It's also not too thick, so it's, uh, I think it's one of the better tapes that you can use for that. The joint compound that I used is a quick set joint compound. That is a really strong compound. It's got good durability, water resistance, a lot of good qualities. The only downside to the quick set joint compounds is that they're not as easy to work with and they also tend to dry up on you relatively quickly so you don't have a, a long working time with them. For the outside corners on the skylight, I used a composite corner bead and I think those are going to be uh, really good for durability. They don't have any metals in there that are going to rust over time. And also because it's a composite material, I think if you bump into it here or there, um, you're not gonna have a whole lot of damage to the corner bead. And again, I'm securing them to the drywall using a quick set. For the inside corners of the skylight and also the angled corner, I use straight flex. Straight flex is a really strong and durable material to use for inside corners and angled corners. Uh, one of the downsides to using it is that it is a thicker material. So you're gonna have to do more buildup to blend it out and to hide it. Here I'm putting up the drywall over the electrical outlets and then I cut the holes for them using the roto zip. 
Now, uh, I did have some issues with that. These boxes are plastic. And if you stop for a little bit too long in a certain area, uh, you can melt some of that plastic and that's no good. So now I'm attaching the drywall for the walls and this is half inch drywall. Um, I am using some uh, strips of wood to keep it off of the floor just a little bit. Now, if you can see this drywall on the edges has a recessed area and that's where your tape joint is going to be. And then when you cut the drywall to height, you want the cut end to be towards the ceiling. Now I'm using mold resistant drywall and this is drywall that you want to use in locations that are exposed to moisture. Um, what makes this drywall different than regular drywall is that the outer layer is resistant to moisture and mold growth. Um, underneath that layer, uh, the drywall is pretty much the same. The gypsum in the middle is the same as regular drywall. And the paper on the back is pretty much the same as regular drywall. So mold resistant drywall is good to use in locations that are exposed to moisture uh, because the top surface will be less likely to grow mold. Uh, but it's not good to use in actual wet locations, um, areas that are exposed to uh, water. And that's because the gypsum will soak up the water and then you'll get uh, water on the back side. The paper on the back will uh, grow mold and then also the studs um, and framing will start to mold. So this isn't a waterproof or water resistant drywall. It's a moisture resistant and outer surface mold resistant drywall. So that's a good distinction to keep in mind. Um, back in the day, they did use this uh, for the shower locations and they would put a waterproofing membrane on top of it. But in all reality, you should not use drywall in your shower. Ideally, you should use some waterproof board material uh, there's several different brands out there to choose from. I chose to go with uh, Go Board for my uh, shower surround, and you'll see that in a later video. So now I'm attaching the drywall on the other side that is going to need the cutouts for the water lines and the drain line. Now when you're drilling the holes in the drywall, it's good to drill about halfway from one side and then go to the other side and drill the rest of the way. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of ripping the paper when you break through. Now, these water lines were not at the same height. And also, the drain line for the sink was too low for the vanity that I wound up getting. These are issues that I didn't get fixed before I put up the drywall. Um, in all reality, I didn't even know they were an issue at the time. So after I got the drywall up and I realized the height of the drain that I needed for my vanity and also that uh, one of the water supply lines was too low for the vanity that I got, um, I had to actually cut a hole in the drywall and address those issues and then patch it back up. So you'll be seeing that in a future video. Then I put up the drywall that uh, has the cutout for the vanity light. And then I'm pre-filling the joints and then taping them and filling all of the uh, screw heads. Once I got all of the corner beads on and all of the taping done and the screw heads uh, filled in, um, I'm going to put on a skim coat on all of the drywall to have a nice even texture and a nice smooth uniform appearance of the drywall. I also want to blend out all of the buildup from the corner beads and the taping. 
One thing to keep in mind while you're skim coating the drywall is that the drywall doesn't need to be perfectly straight or flat. It just needs to have gradual, smooth transitions because your eye's not going to notice a gradual change to the drywall, but it is going to notice non-gradual changes in the drywall. So the, the goal isn't to make the drywall flat as much as it is to make the transitions in the drywall gradual and smooth. Now I start uh, applying my skim coat using quick set. Um, I will tell you that that is not a good thing to do. Quick set is definitely not very well suited for skim coating. Uh, the best option and then what I switched to was to use an all-purpose joint compound. That does take uh, 24 hours uh, between coats to cure, but it gives you a lot more working time and ability to get a nice smooth finish on that. Now, what you're trying to achieve when you're skim coating is you want to do some buildup to get some uh, material over all of the wall. And then also you're filling in the low areas with more material. And you wanna use as wide of a uh, taping knife as possible to get a nice smooth and even uh, coat of drywall mud. Now one trick to that is you want to kind of lift up one edge of it while pushing down on the other edge and create kind of a feather effect on the, on the drywall. Uh, one thing to consider is that you will have some lines in the mud from where you lift off. But uh, what you're going to do is after it dries, you come back and you sand down the high spots and that'll smooth everything out. Uh, so you want to have enough material that you can have a little bit of sanding to make everything smooth. So what you're doing is you're filling in the low areas and then when it dries, you're sanding down the high areas. And then after those two things, you should have a nice smooth uh, wall. Um, you will need to apply um, additional coats as needed. One thing I, I found is that it's good to do, I think, at least two coats of mud. Um, and then that's on the entire surface. And then um, you can come back and you can do spots that you think you missed. Like if you need to fill in a certain area or you want to smooth out a certain area, uh, you can do those uh, uh, spots without having to do the entire wall. Now I will say that I learned some information on the different types of uh, pre-mixed drywall muds. They have all-purpose, all-purpose light, taping compound, and then topping compound. I think there are some other ones out there. Now I didn't use uh, any of the taping compound because for that, like I said, I used the quick set. Now, for doing my skim coat, I did start out with an all-purpose light. You can use either all-purpose or all-purpose light. Um, the all-purpose light is going to be easier sanding, um, whereas the all-purpose is going to be harder to sand once it's dried. Now, one of the things that I did, which I wish that I didn't after I used it, was my final coat, I used the topping compound. Um, the topping compound, it's actually pretty soft and it sands really easily. So if you want to have a nice smooth surface and you want to achieve that in a relatively um, limited amount of time, I think it's ideal for that. 
because uh, you don't really have to do a lot of sanding or even hard sanding. It's just uh, some quick, smooth blending of the material. But the durability of it isn't going to be as good because it's not as hard. Um, so that is the drawback to using a topping compound. Now, after you get all the drywall covered in a coat or two of uh, the skim coat and it's all dried and you're sanding it, it becomes really difficult to tell what the surface looks like because it just all kind of blends in uh, to itself. Uh, but once you paint this, any variation in that surface is going to really stand out. Um, so even though it's really difficult to see now, um, it's going to show up after you paint the surface. So what I do is I'm constantly rubbing my hand over the surface to try and feel any uh, variation in that surface that I need to deal with by either sanding it or going back and filling it in. Um, the other thing I do is once I get I'm pretty satisfied with how that surface is looking and feeling. Um, I come back with a flashlight and I really, really try and look at everything that's going on to make sure that I'm satisfied with how it looks before I uh, decided to proceed with painting it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one and take it easy.